brief introduction about uh, libraries and librarianship in Ukraine. <coughs> well, my colleagues from Ukraine and from the United States helps, helps me with this, this presentation and some slides I uh, share with my friends' presentation. A couple of words about my university, and I'm sorry who, who was yesterday at my presentation, I repeat it. Uh, National University of Kiev Academy is the oldest one in Ukraine, founded in 1615. Mm, uh, but uh, at the same time, it's the youngest university in Ukraine because it was closed by the Order of Russian Tsar in 1815 and only uh, rebirth, rebirth uh, in 1991 that Ukraine took independence. Now it's a modern uh, state university. It's a small university which have only, you see, 3,500 students. But it's a uh, whole university with uh, undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate levels. And it's also a research university with 28 uh, uh, research departments. And we have seven PhD programs. And PhD program is absolutely used for Ukraine experience in higher education. We have different system of uh, third level of higher education, and we have aspirantura and doctorantura, and we have candidate and doctor of science. But now we are, we are in transition to the Western experience, and we are going to, to uh, PhD programs. So the Kimmel Academy provides the first PhD programs in Ukraine, in seven fields. Uh, we are the strong university, and we are in the top of the all uh, national level range, and we uh, uh, really is, is so good university. Some brief information I bring with me and with <coughs> Of course, uh, then university was reopened in 1991. Uh, it is a library, but the library was empty. So we started in 1991 from the first book, from the first child, from the first librarian. And uh, now we have about one million volumes in our book collection, uh, both in uh, print and electronic, and uh, at least one third of our collection is electronic collection. And we have already 10 libraries around the campus of university, undergraduate library, graduate library, and, uh, philological library, uh, humanities, uh, library for social school, and so on, and we have one very interesting, maybe for your library, we have public, American public library at the campus. It's open for everyone who wants to read the new, uh, newest uh, the books from publishing houses, American publishing houses, or to watch American movies, or to, to discuss something. It's a real, it's really pretty, pretty, small, pretty library, about 10,000 volumes in the book collection, but very useful for, for, for Ukrainian citizens who want to, to know more about the United States and about United's, U.S. culture and history and so on. <coughs> as at your libraries, as, as at your university, the library is the head of university and the day uh, average visits is high level. The library works seven days a week and uh, full of visitors all academic years and and the same situation as here. Some, only a few slides about Ukraine, just to remind you of our history and the place in geography of Europe. Ukraine is uh, just in the center of Europe geographically, but not uh, politically now. So it's a big issue for, for us now to be the politically in European Union politically strong, strong country on the European uh, landscape. <coughs> you see? Uh, of course, I, um, I have to, to um, tell you a little about our history. And uh, you have some, some great books at your bookstore, like for example, from Subterni on another one, and I recommend it, I strongly recommend it you to, to take it. It's very, very interesting. And, uh, but I uh, just remind you that Ukraine had no independence at least four centuries from um, 
Russia, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was a part of Russia Empire from uh, middle of 18th century, and it was a part of the Soviet Union from uh, 1922. And uh, uh, we have many tragic pages in our Ukrainian history from this uh, pressing to be by the Russia. And uh, through the more than 70 years uh, being in Soviet Union, through the great famine, called the war in the middle of the 20th century, the at least 4 million people that died. And through the um, uh, shooting of intellect Ukrainian intellectuals, writers, scientists, and state activists during the Stal Stalin's era, and um, uh, Russia uh, imposed strict limits of attempt to uh, elevate the Ukrainian language and culture, even uh, banning its use in study during the Soviet period and uh, uh, early time. And you understand how, um, how this affected the whole history of the country, which actually have, uh, for more than four centuries, have no independence. You, you can understand how Soviet ideological matching, um, like uh, evil, uh, an evil empire, as the Soviet Union was called, to destroy everything Ukrainian. And unfortunately, unfortunately it, it, it's uh, influenced everything that concerned Ukraine, including the development of science, education, culture, and libraries. But the Ukraine was reborn, and officially declared itself an independent state on August 20, 24, 1991, and at the breakup of the Soviet Union. So we have 20 years of Ukrainian independence and new experience in building uh, up democracy, economic reform, privatization, and civil uh, liberties efforts. Uh, libraries and librarianship in Ukraine, oh, of course, some, some slides about Soviet Union uh, period and libraries and librarianship in Ukraine reflect the history and development of the country and its people. <coughs> the brief history of libraries in Ukraine starts from the library of Yaroslav the Wise, the first state library of Kiev Rus from the 11th century, from monastery libraries from 11th century all around the territory of, of Ukraine, from the brotherhoods, the strong brotherhoods in Lviv, Kiev, Chinegi, a different part of Ukraine in the 16th and 17th century, from the oldest university in Ukraine in Lviv, Kiev Academy, Kharkiv, Odessa, Kiev, Chernivtsi, and, and so on. Ukraine became the part of the Soviet Union in 1922. And uh, of course, you know the, the Soviet Union was uh, one of the biggest countries in the world with population two to 250 million peoples. And uh, Ukraine has one of the world's best developed library networks. It consists of, you see, 325,000 libraries with a huge amount of books. But with a very special role of library, this ideology of Marxism-Leninism, that's a solid term. Uh, I suppose the Soviet Library Network was one of the world's biggest and played a crucial part in the progress of Soviet culture, research, and education. More than a half of population were library users. The network of public Libraries accounted for over one third of the total libraries. The most library concept was used by the Soviet state as an instrument of ideological education, the education of Soviet people in the spirit of Marxism Leninist ideas. Access to information, especially social, political, economic, and humanities, was limited and strictly controlled by Soviet ideologists. There were special storage de departments and uh, censorship in book publishing and in book selection for libraries, etc., etc., etc. Some slides from the beginning of the Soviet term, and you see <coughs> the special direction for the libraries, how to, to organize it, to, to provide everybody with a books. 
And you see, uh, one of the first decret of Soviet Union was directed to confiscate a private book collection with more than 500 books to public to public access to public libraries, and it was done. And of course, the Soviet Soviet ideological machine. Uh, uh, take to, to control everything, uh, uh, organizing books collection, the library collections. And uh, 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 it was very strong direction. There are books that organize and there are books that disorganize. So that's one. <coughs> the books that disorganize uh, uh, and separately from the book collection. And uh, the special special collection, Spetskra, a special sets for the some some uh, close connection in some libraries. Uh, but of course, maybe you you see uh, you know about the phenomenon of samizda samizda uh, self self publishing the uh, phenomenon that uh, it's uh, not under control of Soviet machine, but but samizda was published even here, because there are many famous publishing houses for, for Russian or Ukrainian publication made in United States territory and uh, Europe territory. And some uh, late placards about how to discreet, how to be. One uh, more a tragic page in Ukrainian library history is the Second World War. Uh, German troops occupied Ukraine territory during 1941-1945, and this war caused great losses to the libraries. Before the beginning of war, there were 44,000 libraries in Ukraine, which total book collection is amounting to uh, more than 100 million items. And during the war, more than 40,000 libraries were ruined and damaged. And about 80 million books were destroyed or stolen or go to, to Germany or, or Paris. Uh, but nevertheless, the library network in Ukraine was basically restored by the, 90, uh, uh, the middle of 15. And now, uh, the last 20 years was a period of considerable change and development in Ukrainian library scene. As a country, as a, as a country went through the hard times of political and economical reforms, progressing from the totalitarian state uh, toward democracy and open society, so our library community now were in transition from the information control to information access. But you see, it's so difficult to to do for a short time, and some change. Uh, pro proclaimed, declaimed, in, but in practice, in, in the still we have some some difficulties. <coughs> now the modern library network in Ukraine consists of 25,000 libraries, including 18, more than 1,800, uh, 18,000 public libraries, more than 800 uh, university libraries, medical libraries, with total book collection. Uh, more than 400 million volumes, I see. The library community in Ukraine is currently working toward new library policies in Ukraine based on free access to ideas, library materials, and services. Intellectual freedom issues are the basic of co contemporary library information policies in Ukraine. Our Ukrainian Library Association was born in 1996. It's a young library association, but so strong and uh, uh, to, to lobby everything about library and librarianship in Ukraine. The biggest library in Ukraine is Vernotsky National Library, one of the 10 biggest in the world. The total collection is about 15 million, 15 million including uh, 60,000 of rare books. Some of them dating from 11th century. And you see the oldest manuscript from the Vinatsky Library, Kiev Globalization List, Kiev, from 99th centuries, the oldest translation from Latin. 
our treasure. Uh, the first manuscript written in the Eastern Europe, uh, a Franski Evangelia from the 13th century. Our treasure, Persopnitsky Evangelia, Persopnitsky mm -hmm. Gospel, the, uh, the book for Ukraine, President took the out of office on, on this book, on inauguration. You see <coughs> the first constitution of Ukraine from 17, from 18th century also in this book collection. And of course, it's a modern library and very modern project uh, improved for, for uh, scholars and uh, users. And I told a little bit uh, yesterday about the great project about scientific uh, journals in open access. Almost all scientific, all academic journals in Ukraine now in open access through Bernanski portal, and you can use it also. Only 23 journals has uh, embargo term from six months to, to two years, but almost uh, everything in open access. The next biggest one, uh, but uh, I love this library uh, very, very much, is the great uh, part of Ukraine, western part of Ukraine, Lviv. Lviv was the capital of Austro-Hungarian. And uh, the Lviv scientific, we have colored from Lviv here, and congratulations. <laughs> and uh, Lviv scientific uh, national uh, library of Ukraine consists of 8 million volumes. And it's a real unique collection of incunabulous qualities, all printed books from uh, 18, from 15th to 19th century. They have very great collection of Ukrainian and foreign periodicals, especially from 19th century. They have huge collection of maps, if you see how many. And they have very great collection of Ukrainian and world art from the beginning of 16th century. And you see 350,000 items in art collection here. It's the biggest collection, art collection in among the libraries. And of course, manuscripts, documents from 11th century to 20th century. <sighs> For example, Kochma or Apostol, Polist, Krechevsky, Lukopus, Motika, Maps and Maps. <laughs> this library take part in very great in, in great pro project uh, uh, together with uh, Ossolinsky National Institute from Poland to digitization of manuscripts documents. And you see already uh, th they uh, approach to more than two million uh, items to be digitized in next few years. And you see uh, at least 300 300,000 uh, values to this. So this, this, that's why this library uh, with uh, another joint to World uh, Digital Library Project in the United States. So last, last uh, June, four, uh, first four Ukrainian libraries joined to World Digital Library, National Bernanski Library, Kim Hila Library, National Parliamentary Library, and Stefanik Library joined this great project to present Ukrainian heritage, to present Ukrainian rare books, to present Ukrainian culture and history in this project. <coughs> it may be unusual for different countries, but we have five national level libraries in Ukraine, except I mentioned National Vernadsky and Stefanik, we have national parliamentary libraries like the Library of Congress, who uh, serves for, for uh, our, our Ukrainian government. We have also National Medical Library, very good, and very strong collection. National Children Library, Ukrainian Book Chamber, as a center of national bibliography. <coughs> and the most one, the biggest one, the network of public libraries, the most in, uh, diverse and extensive 1,800, uh, um, uh, 18,000 public libraries 
this uh, more than 330 million volumes. And uh, nationwide, there is one fixed point library for every 25 or 30 hundred pupils. Uh, public libraries went incorporated <coughs> into centralized library networks uh, headed by the central libraries of cities, districts, and or rural areas. Mm, the uh, transition away from communism towards a more democratic society uh, had profound effect on, library, on Ukrainian libraries, of course. Library in transition still now. The political and economic transition uh, affected every aspect of Ukrainian librarianship, from collection development to professional values and priorities to funding to new information needs of library users, and so on and so on. But uh, we still have many difficulties with um, this library uh, uh, landscape in Ukraine, and uh, at least um, uh, it's only two and half percent of Ukrainian public libraries still now uh, has access to internet. It's, it's very low. That's why we have few uh, very big and huge products in Ukraine. And the biggest one uh, comes last year to Ukraine, the product from Bill and Melinda Gates program, <coughs> funding $25 million. For uh, access to information and access to internet to public libraries, so software, hardware, computers, <coughs> and trainings, of course, and training, of course, for uh, especially for uh, small libraries, small public library in village and uh, in rare areas. Uh, the project anticipates providing 1,500 1, public libraries in the little city of village with computers and linking them to internet and trainings for librarians. Microsoft Corporation made its own contribution to the project free software by the cost of approximately $4 million. The project also has an aim to help librarians to present libraries' interest and receive resources necessary for local communities' needs. It also will help to understand and realize the key role of libraries in the society and the necessity of maintaining them. This project is very successful and uh, it actually raised the new wave of attention and respect of uh, society to the public library. The similar United States, again, United States project <coughs> on linking public libraries to the internet according to this project, Library Electronic Access Project. At least 150 libraries in Ukraine are connected to the internet. Mm, and uh, the goal of this program also is to support Ukrainian citizens' access to information and access to, to democracy. And you see some Leap centers in Ukraine. And you see the, the children and young generation and old person and person with disabilities can enter to the library and have access to internet now. And how it's changed their life in the small village, the small cities. It's very, very interesting to see. And of course, uh, I. Uh, few slides about university libraries in Ukraine. We have a big amount of university libraries. We have about 800 universities in Ukraine, 800 higher educational institutions, and among them 351 universities. And we have also a strong network of academic uh, research institutes in Ukraine. Uh, so the university libraries, total book collection more than one. 122 million volumes, and uh, there are a big amount of rare books collection. It's about one million vol volumes in rare book collection, from uh, <coughs> manuscripts, scholarships, and, and so on, so on. The biggest collection I point on the slide, and it's one of the best rare book collection in Simferopol, in Tavrida. Uh, national University, it's Crimea, it's the southern part of Ukraine. And Kiev Mohila Academy Library, you see the old 
building from 17th century also. With, we have some, some rare books, collection of rare books. And very good uh, university library in Kharkiv, National University by Karazin. That's why we uh, think about uh, uh, university libraries now, and one of the, uh, our project, uh, special devoted to university libraries, and to, to help uh, Ukrainian scholars, students, professors, to have access to internet. So the project called uh, Electronic Library of Ukraine, uh, the knowledge center development in universities. And now the project started only a few years ago, but now we have 15 universities in our consortium, 12 universities and three who applied just now during my uh, during these uh, months. So uh, it's a strong network of leading universities and uh, we have two, if you, you see geographically, it's cover all Ukraine territory. <coughs> And we have two main tasks in this project, the access to the world scientific resource for Ukrainian scholars. Of course, we, we realize it's necessary for Ukrainian scholars to be involved into a uh, world academic society and to have access to, to, to uh, scientific resources. That's why we provide, uh, uh, we subscribe some leading databases for electronic journals or some, some materials for our scholars. And also we realize how open access uh, resource grows in the world. That's why we have a uh, uh, strong list in our portal and this recommendation to use open access and resource. And that's why we realize you, you, you know all of this, and not only this, but many resources. And uh, but we, we do it also. And usage statistics is grow from year to year. And we create a special portal for every Ukrainian scholar, for every Ukrainian student can enter to this portal and uh, browse the journal from A to Z and uh, find information about uh, a resource, electronic resource, both in uh, licensing and in open access and can uh, use uh, uh, electronic delivery service and can uh, also browse the Ukrainian electronic archives or repositories all around the, the Ukraine. And you see some, some example how to use our journal and we point from which university we have, we have access if it's licensing. And of course we provide many trainings, trainings for trainers and trainings for users, for different group of users in all around the, our university because information literacy instruction, it's, we need to be more strong and more active in this. And uh, the second part of our project is uh, support uh, is integrate Ukrainian academic community into the world academic community. That's why uh, 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 we provide uh, the special uh, uh, multi-university repository service. Uh, each Ukrainian scholars can, uh, can self-archive uh, own publication or uh, article or presentation or some learning materials here. And uh, now it's uh, about 27 institutions already registered, uh, re re registered here, and uh, we have also very good, uh, uh, about 70 deposits. It's a new project, uh, at least for last six or seven months only, but we, uh, we, we hope it will be use useful. And we, hope we have already 27 uh, repositories in Ukraine, and I mentioned already <coughs> already all academic journals in open access now. It's good for, for scientists. And of course, uh, some, some trends, some new trends about 
Okay, again. Uh, library and librarian science, and it became a cliche to say that in the 21st century, libraries are operating in a complex of an increasing competitive environment. But it's true, and for Ukrainian also, and uh, you know, we are challenged you know, by our ongoing proliferation of information resource, and we are going to uh, information access uh, 24 hours and seven days a week. We are going to openness and accessibility. We, um, uh, we uh, respect new information needs of library users, and we develop our library collection according to information needs. And of course, we improve uh, our information technologies, and we you know, realize we, we develop our electronic collections also. Of course, the big issue for Ukrainian libraries, of course, uh, you see uh, the big amount of rare books and Ukrainian heritage uh, preservation, preservation, conservation program, and we have some some special program for preservation and co conservation. And of course, open access development, because I am so enjoy to, to, to be involved in open access issue, and I, I'm sure open access is a future of scientific communication all around the world, that's why it's a big issue for, not only for Ukraine, but all around the world. And uh, I appreciate your time and so thankful for your for your attention and uh, I will help.